Thank you. Thank you all for being here and coming back so quickly from break. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go in depth with introductions to our panel, which is called Journalism in the Age of Authoritarianism. Um, populist and polarization. Um, I did want to note, however, that one of our panelists, Nigel um, Magamu, has not joining us today. On April 4th, his newsroom was attacked in Zimbabwe by the municipal police and the national police force. Um, that caused him to miss his visa appointment, and so he was unable to get a visa to attend. Um, but we are um, with him in spirit, and um, I want to kick things off with Cynthia. Well, thank you, everybody, and thank you for being here and for listening to our stories. My name is Cynthia, and I work in Confidencial Digital. This is one of the few independent media outlets that used to uh, be in Nicaragua. And when people ask us about Nicaragua and we're outside our country, we try to promote it as a very beautiful country that it is. So we have beautiful beaches, and we have very impressive nature and the people are so welcoming and for journalists to try to convince them to come to our country we usually say that the the beer is cheap so you're more than welcome to come so when this dictatorship is all over you can all come and have a party with us because we're going to be free at some point so um this is a picture of when a very complicated date for us, a very sad day, which is when our um, building was confiscated back in December 14th. So the building, uh, it happened in two phases. The first day, um, the police got in the building and they took all of our equipments and TV, TV material and our accounting information. And so can you imagine going to, our of, to your office that you left the day before and you get there and it's like your house has been robbed, right? It was very sad and we left thinking there's no way that they're going to come and do something to, to our building a day after this happened, but we were very wrong. So the police just occupied the building and since December 14, we haven't been able to enter our second home. And this is my, my boss, Carlos Fernando Chamorro, and he gave um, uh, an interview that day to uh, Lucia Pineda, who's now in jail for exercising her right to, to the profession of journalism. And, and he said that the, the government can, you know, steal everything from us, and they're still, that they can, they cannot prevent us from doing our work because our passion is not in the computer. And the computer doesn't make the, the articles and the investigation itself, it's us. So as long as we're thriving to do our job, it's gonna be, there's gonna be journalism for a very long time. So how did we get to this point? How Ortega, Daniel Ortega, our uh, president and dictator, uh, took us to this point. So very quickly, he um, got to be president in the 80s with the support mainly of Cuba and, and the Soviet, the socialist bloc. And then after, um, you know, a civil war and up to 50,000 people dead, obviously Nicaraguans didn't want to have any more war. So Violeta Barrios de Chamorro became president and She's the first and the only so far uh, female president of Nicaragua, and we're very proud of that. So um, during the 90s, she was um, the president of Nicaragua, and, and Ortega had this uh, phrase that I'm not sure if I'm cor uh, translating correctly, but it says that he, he was going to govern from down below, and that's what he did for 16 years. Until in 2007, there were elections, and he won the elections again. And since 2000, 2007 to this point, he's been the president, and he has changed the constitution so, so that he can run indefinitely. So during this time, as journalists, we have faced, you know, uh, 
this dynamic in which we don't have access to public information and the president doesn't give interviews and there's a politic of fear in which the people who work for the state, they don't want to give information because they're afraid of losing their jobs. And in the second poorest country of Latin America, losing your job and not having an income is something very important to people. And so they don't want to risk that. So what we're facing now, we're facing repression. This picture here is from um, the day after our building was confiscated. And my colleagues and, and other uh, journalists uh, from Nicaragua were covering uh, this day in which everybody went to the police to ask information about this confiscation. And the, and the police was after my colleagues attacking them um, for asking what happened, right? Also, we're facing illegal imprisonment. Uh, uh, Lucia Pineda and Miguel Mora uh, used to have a channel called 100% Noticias, and they became really important during this political crisis because they were the ones who were trans, you know, broadcasting what happened 24-7, and people were always tuned, uh, getting information from them, so they became what we called a pain in the ass for the government. So, so they're in, in prison and they have been in jail for over a hundred days now. So we, we try to, when we participate in this, in these conferences, we try to uh, get the attention on them because I, if I'm not mistaken, they're the, the only uh, journalists who have been, who are in jail right now because because they're doing their work, which is going there, putting a camera or a recording machine and asking questions. And that shouldn't be a crime, but in Nicaragua, it is a crime. So, I mean, for the government. And also, we're facing exile. Uh, me and a lot of my colleagues have uh, left the country. And Luis Galeano is here among us, and he fled the country um, after uh, the building of 100% Noticias was confiscated and all the, more than 60 journalists have left their countries because they're afraid that they're going to be put in prison like Lucia and Miguel and because they're afraid of, uh, you know, losing their lives. And also, um, we're also facing like the, blo the blockage of the material that we need to print the, the information uh, that we used to inform people, and La Prensa, which is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, um, media outlets in Nicaragua, they don't have paper to print. And I believe they won't be able to keep printing the newspaper after April or May. So um, they're trying to get attention from the public to, to say, you know, if you as a citizen don't get the information from us, you need to get involved because media comes with democracy and we don't have that right now. But among this crisis, we have also, you know, in Confidencial, we have gotten out of our comfort zone. And so we have applied certain changes to our model. Uh, before we used to be in an office 24, I mean, not 24 seven, but almost. <laughs> And so, um, and now we had to, to protect ourselves and protect our colleagues. We have been uh, working remotely and we're mixing, you know, uh, uh, this use of offices that nobody, need, nobody knows where we are because of our own safety and the safety or the, of the sources. And we also, we have to keep things secret because we were afraid that this, um, that the police is going to come after us. And within this crisis, we, uh, we used to broadcast two TV shows, one on Wednesday and one on Sunday on, on national TV, and we got off the air. So we had to, you know, put everything on YouTube, and so we're adapting to this new model in which people are, uh, you know, following our uh, live broadcasting uh, for our shows. And before we had this traditional commercial model in which we depended on advertising, but now we have done donation campaigns and we're selling ebooks and we're doing everything we can to earn the money that we need to support support our our company. And so, yeah, we're trying to adapt as fast as we can to, you know, 
assure that we do the journalism that Nicaragua needs. Also, among this crisis, there are a lot of there's a proliferation of independent media outlets that are quite smaller than the traditional, you know, uh, traditional ones. So I think that we have become stronger uh, because not only this, these media outlets have, have surged, but also the people have you know, felt so empowered by the fact that they're there and they're witness of, of this political crisis and they can grab a phone and record everything. So in a way, we're not alone and we're, we're joined by the people who have believed in us and they believe that the information has to be you know, out there so that people know the truth about what's happening in Nicaragua. So we hope to continue doing that and get stronger as time passes. Thank you very much.